When I was asked to speak here, I thought we get asked to do a lot of things and sometimes they might have no meaning, no significance, no effect. And other times you're asked to do something where it's impossible to say no. When we have a good man treated the way he's been treated and we do nothing, then we do untold damage to our culture, to ourselves, to our children, to our future. So I wanted to meet with Ed and find out what kind of man he is because I didn't know what to write. And after a long conversation with him, I asked him at the end, is there anything that you might be able to sum up this scenario with? And he hesitated, and he's a shy, quiet, beautiful, graceful man, and he hesitated and he said, the principles with which you do anything are what truly matters. Now, I didn't know what the hell he was talking about, because I'm not the brightest, so I had to think about it. And I had to find some way and some reason to write this piece, so it came from that. And it's called the principles of by which you do anything is what matters. The principles by what you do is what truly matters. Ed Honahan said that. Ed is the master of the high court. Quite the title, isn't it? Quite the position. Quite the crown for the corrupt. Imagine the kind of man who yearns for that type of title. Master of the high court. A parasite dressed up as a protector. A scavenger slicing the wounded for the bigger beasts to feed on. A profiteer of misery seeking the virgin bite of a fresh kill. A politician dressed in the clothes of the courts. As master of the high court, Ed Honahan is meant to be a bad man, a malignant succubus, a facilitator of suicide, a team player. Problem is, Ed is that rare thing in the corridors of power. Ed is a good man. They call him an eccentric. That's what they call good men these days, an eccentric. Some others call him a maverick. Some claim this gentle, erudite, soft-spoken master of the high court might even be a hero. The working class have long known what a conveyor belt of dehumanization the courts can be. Be a billionaire and watch the banks and the courts and the government roll out the red carpet for you. They'll make deals for you, offer you contracts, tell you to keep your taxes and write off hundreds of billions of euro for you. But be a bloke in a tracksuit and watch them stare with the blank-eyed hunger of hyenas on the hunt. And these half-crazy, half-dogs have acquired a taste for a different kind of delicacy now. They salivate as judges allow their clients' lives to destroy lives with impunity. They listen as a few more nails are banged into the coffin of our collective liberty. From protected perches in foreign countries, parasitic vulture bosses instruct local hire hyenas to move in on the vulnerable because both breeds of scavenger agree that no cold-blooded kill has quite the warm-blooded payoff of the repossession of an Irish family home. If that sounds extreme to you, visit the courts and witness for yourself the horror of people trying to save their homes. Witness the murderous malice the bailed out banks and their capos have for the very people who bail them out. Bankers don't bite the hand that feeds. They rip the entire arm out of the socket and beat you to death with it. And the judges tell you this is what modern justice tastes like. You're told to swallow the force-fed bile of professional liars. Stand in line in a court-ordained slaughterhouse. Join haunted, broke and broken people in an orderly queue to be put out of their misery while the spoils of their lives are sheared among their killers. Nobody speaks for these people in the courts. People who can't afford expensive lawyers, people who can't afford to feed their kids because they're still trying to furnish a loan that the banks long ago had written off in that bailout. People who can't afford to think of any way out of their pain other than at the end of a rope. In court, nobody protects these people. People like you and me, people like your mothers, your fathers, your brothers, your sisters, your sons, your daughters. Nobody except for one man, Ed Honahim, the master of the high court. The basic function of law is to ensure moral, financial and physical protections are afforded to all citizens equally. The Association of Judges Ireland, of which Peter Kelly is the president, states, quote, the idea of law is that it embodies the core values of our society, creating rights and entitlements as well as duties and obligations. Nobody is above the law, no matter how wealthy or powerful they are, end quote. We all know that for the fallacy that it is. 
We've already witnessed the obscene consequences of our neoliberal government. Policies are implemented, people struggle, people suffer, people die, and politicians are promoted. Ed Honahan protects people by using the law. In the realm of the hunter and the prey, he doesn't take sides. He simply holds bankers and their capos to the same standard that those parasites hold us to. When the law is weaponized by highly paid henchmen to protect their insatiable vulture bosses, Ed interrogates the bankers' rabid exploitation of that law and finds a way to hand a few silver bullets back to the people. He makes the law a two-way street, a little more balanced finally accessible to both sides. He brings equality to the law and uses it to do what the law is supposed to do. On behalf of the people, Ed Honahan has faced down the vulture funds and for that, he has become the hunted. Countless people will verify how Ed Honahan has empowered them, but a judge wants to stop him. Countless will prove how Ed Honahan uses the law to protect them, but a judge wants to remove those protections. Countless more will need the help of good men like Ed Honahan in the future. Some of those people might be you. But a judge has taken it upon himself to prevent Ed Honahan from giving you that help. Why would a judge impose such obscene censure on a fellow servant of the public? A judge renowned in the past for his attempts to recognize social and economic rights. A judge due to retire in a year or two. Ed Honahan is trying to protect vulnerable people, and he's doing it better than anybody in the courts. In a culture where pretenders, posers, and politicians fail upwards, Ed is doing his job so damn well that a judge wants to destroy him. If the principles by which you do anything is what truly matters, then what principles are at work in the removal of a good man's capacity to fight for equality for all in the law? Ed Honahan is a proud servant of us, the people. Nobody is quite sure anymore who some of these judges might be the servants of. A good man like Ed Honahan wouldn't be made master of the high court today. Fairness and decency and dignity don't sell in this era of every man for himself and to hell with the vulnerable. We pay lip service to mental health, but let's be honest, there is nothing more despised in this country than people who need our help. They are weak. They need to be cut off like the cancer that they are. They need to be tortured and sacrificed to the banks because only then can the strong survive. Only then can the banks and the judges and the politicians go back to rolling out the red carpet for their billionaire buddies flying high above the faulty radar of our laws. Another eccentric Irishman, Edmund Burke, is purported to have said the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. But what happens when good men do something and get stopped doing it? If we do not align ourselves with the thoughts and actions of good men and good women, then our cowardly silence will choke us. And it will choke our children. It will choke our country. Because if this can be done to the master of the high court, imagine what can be done to us. James Joyce was also called an eccentric, often said with a disparaging wink and a nudge. Constance Markiewicz, Oscar Wilde, Sean McBride, Hannah Sheehy Skeffington, Samuel Beckett, Rosie Hackett, James Connolly, Luke Kelly. The names are endless. A long list of other eccentrics whose legacies are bled dry every day by our governments and tourist boards and arts administrators in the peacock pretense of national pride. Some of today's eccentrics include nation-altering men like John Hume and Morris McCabe and life-saving women like Christina Noble and Debbie Deegan. And those brave nurses and midwives fighting for a better future are probably a little left of center too. And then there's that gentle, curious, dignified man who sits in a stuffy little courtroom in Dublin, diligently working for vulnerable people betrayed by a court system increasingly intent on facilitating corporate theft. That's why we call good men eccentric. Decency has been relegated to the realm of the eccentric, a label used to dehumanize the most humane of men. Nobody calls evil men eccentrics. They call them politicians and bankers. Somehow these morons have taken the reins of our national destiny. 
mediocrity dressed itself up as leadership and demanded its day in the doll. And we allowed the psychopaths to stay, to take over, to do billions of dollars worth of dodgy deals, to give hundreds of millions of euros of tax breaks to vulture funds, to create a government-run whorehouse where the Johns get to screw the clients to death for free. But what if they're not morons? What if these psychopaths know exactly what they're doing? What if all this is simple treachery dressed up as policy? Murder dressed up as austerity. Democracy dressed up as Goldman Sachs. Brilliant. Here, here, well, here, here. well done, well said, and true. As our government uses the courts to facilitate the moral, ethical and economic rape of our people, hustlers, card sharks and snake oil salesmen play politics with our lives, with our children's lives. Posers and liars on both sides feign compassion for photo shoots, then go right back into the Dole bar and raise another 20 glasses to the con that has become our country. There is no rise of the right, there is only the abject failure of the left. Most of these politicians have the principles of a pimp. The law means nothing to either side. What is happening here is not tax avoidance. It is tax evasion. It is theft. It is government facilitated fraud. It is treason. When courts take instruction from vulture funds, our law dies. When politicians take instruction from Goldman Sachs, our democracy dies. When good men and good women take treacherous, treasonous betrayal from our government, our nation dies. But when all this horror becomes too much for us to comprehend, we must never forget that men and women are fighting to bring decency and honor and nobility back to this country. We must never forget that a quiet, diligent, eccentric Irishman is sitting in his stuffy courtroom and studying ways to use the law to defy Goliath. We must never forget that a good man who has demonstrated the real meaning of compassion must be allowed to continue for all of us. Because in a snake pit of liars, Ed Honahan, master of the High Court, is a profound example of what it means when you say the principles by which you do anything is what truly matters. Here, here. Steve, I'm going to sing a Shano song from Connemara. It's two brothers speaking to each other, and it's a, it's a song of despair. But our, our tradition has always been to take the pain and the bloodshed in our music and make it into something that, we, that can lift us and something that we can follow, something that we can nourish ourselves with. So, Shine Mochinev. Kera to Ajin, Ayere Ajinio, Kera to Ajin, Alfonavaro.
Erda kız tu egda dadi yere ali no Erda kız tu egda dadi hafam na varo hafam musta belgesin İsmallahüge O ta metin Afu muhri Esiligi Gumallahi Nick O'Brien Oh, 